Welcome to the educational e-platform for training in neurological physiotherapy of the Faculty of Physiotherapy of the University of Valencia. In this video, we will talk about upper limb exercises that we can perform in Parkinson's disease for the shoulder and shoulder gilder and for hand motor skills. Physiotherapy for upper limb in Parkinson's disease focuses on counteracting the consequences of the bradykinesia sign, which involves a decrease in the amplitude and speed of movement. Therefore, we will do different therapeutic exercises focused on shoulder and shoulder girdle movement, as well as hand motor skills. We will start with hand motor skills. Before starting any motor activity, it will be necessary to do stretches to counteract rigidity of the hand and forearm muscles. Next, we will use a table for the motor skill exercises. First, we will ask the person to shake his or her hands in different directions and make different movements at a great amplitude as seen in the image. These repetitive movements without intention of movement and in an open kinematic chain can help control limb tremor in addition to preparing for the motor skills that will follow. We will start with general movements where the aim is the range of motion of the fingers and wrist. We will ask the person to open his or her fingers excessively, initially at a spontaneous or comfortable speed. Then we will ask to close the hand. Next, we will ask for a forearm pronosupination, also in an exaggerated way, emphasizing on reaching the entire possible range of movement, even if it is done with difficulty. Next, finger movements will be digit movements and pincer grasps. First, opposing the thumb with each of the other four fingers at its most distal end. In the video, you can see how the patient has been asked to perform the entire range of motion by extending her fingers after each digit movement. Now, the exercise consists of the pincer grasp between the first and second finger. This consists of the lateral grip, which we do when we take a key to open a door or, for example, when we take a spoon. In the video, we see how the patient performs the lateral grasp from proximal to distal and finishes the sequence with pincer grasp. When the movement is complex to execute, we will ask first to perform it unilaterally and then bilaterally. To add the complexity of speed to the exercise, we will add a metronome with which the patient must synchronize to execute the thumb pincer grasp sequence. Depending on the person's performance, we can decrease or increase the cadence to adapt the exercise to the patient. Next, through hand motor skills, we will practice flexibility and bilateral coordination. We will ask for an alternating task between the right and left hand as shown in the video always making a wide movement. To increase speed, we add again the metronome to control the cadence of the movement. Continuing with the stimulation of cognitive functions which may be affected in Parkinson's disease, we will use a sequence of different movements that the patient must learn, repeat and control. In the video, we can see how the patient repeats the sequence as the physiotherapist is showing her. Now we see how the patient makes several attempts until she manages to complete the sequence independently. To make execution more difficult, we add cadence control. You can see how with the right hand, it is not only difficult to perform the movements, but also to synchronize to the established cadence. In the execution of the left hand, we do not observe this difficulty. This occurs due to cognitive impairments such as executive functions, which can be early altered and are involved in movement planning, as well as multitasking execution. In the next exercise, we will use a plasticine type dough for the person to manipulate and mold with one hand. This promotes functional flexion of the hand, plus it offers some resistance in order to strengthen the muscles and the grip. We will do the same with the extension of the fingers, using an elastic tape that will provide resistance to the opening of the hand. 
For improving effectiveness and motor control, the person will open and close the fingers at slow speed. Continuing with hand motor control, we suggest a writing sequence with proprioceptive feedback. Micrographia is a well-known sign of people with Parkinson's disease due to the impossibility of making a wide and fast movement. On the other hand, tremor contributes to making a non-harmonious movement and therefore a not fluent writing. To help improve hand control during writing, items such as a rubber grip or a weight will be used on the end of the pencil or pen. This will allow more proprioception to the hand, helping to harmonize the movement, and also fluency and tremor itself. In relation to bradykinesia, which appears during writing, First, free exercises will be done to allow the entire wrist movement to be carried out when manipulating the pen. The patient must become aware of the movement and the full range wrist movement when drawing semicircles on the paper. In order to continue influencing the amplitude of writing, we will ask the patient to write the letter E uninterruptedly, as large as she can that is, moving the wrist up and down throughout its entire range. We use this letter because of the curves it presents and because it allows us to make a sequence without stopping. The patient should be reminded to keep writing large letters until the end of the line. If the person is not able to perform full amplitude, the same exercise can be performed on templates that have drawings or letters large enough and with enough curves so that they can experience the full hand movement while she marks the drawing on the paper. It is advisable to alternate this execution at the expense of the movement of the wrist, but also of the shoulder and elbow, which is seen in the movement and position of the forearm. In the following sequence, templates are also used, but with different font sizes, which the person must copy. In this template, an upper and lower line has been left next to each font size so that the person can have a guidance as to how they should occupy all the available space between the lines. It is advisable to promote writing with lowercase letters to promote the wrist movement and the sequence. Whenever possible, we will try to promote the execution of broad movements in functional tasks. Here we see how the person must transfer clips from one glass to another carefully leaving them on the edge of the glass. Once again, we must remind the person to perform a wide movement of the fingers and practice all the grips of the thumb with the other four fingers. Continuing with the same aim of performing functional tasks with maximum range of motion of the fingers and wrist, we promote hand manipulation by using a sock, which the patient must roll around on its open end. Another option is to tie bows around a cane, as well as folding a paper on itself several times. Other interesting manipulation activities to use within therapy are transferring beans from one dish to another with a spoon, roll up a towel or a large piece of paper, or drag an elastic band across the table with the fingers. Finally, we can use computer tools such as applications aimed at hand mobility so that the person can use them at home. Thank you for using this e-platform.